Now that you have all the tools you need to pull cables through your walls, let's pull some cables. If you missed that video, click the box over here and it's best to watch it first because it describes what tools you need and what equipment you should get, etc. What cable you need? Well, that was a whole separate video, so click the box over here to see what cable you need. So click either box. Yeah. At the end of the video, I'm going to share a special tool, which I ended up using pulling the longest lengths of cables because it was, well, virtually impossible to do without it. So be sure to watch the whole video to see what tool that was. To get started, figure out where you want the cable to end up. This is the best place to start because uh, all your conduits will probably gather at one point and most often your conduits won't be labeled. So go to the place where you want to have your cable and we'll start from there. From there, thread the cable through the conduit you want the cable to go through and th keep threading it through until the, the person who is in the central location sees it and pull it through so you can work with it uh, conveniently. Make sure to thread through the uh, side or head of the pulling wire, which has the wire connection head. If you feed through the ball head, well, you won't be able to attach your cable. So once you have the cable in the central location, you have to attach the cable. And this is a little bit different uh, per type of cable, but we're talking Ethernet cable. And it doesn't really matter if you have CAT5 or CAT7 or whatever. It basically comes down to the same steps. In my case, I'm using CAT7. And first off, you start with removing the outer plastic shell. Then we have four pairs and a ground wire. We uh, split off two pairs and the ground wire and we snip those off. We don't need those. You want the connection to the pooling wire to be as uh, basically as thin as possible. We also need it to be strong enough to be able to pull the, pull the wire. So two pairs should be enough for that. Once you have those two pairs, re remove the foil and thread them through the head that's on the pulling wire. Once they're through the head of the pulling wire, twist them together so that they don't come loose too easily. In our case, we want to pull through two wires, so we will be attaching the second wire to the first wire with a piece of tape. Using tape is optional if you're only pulling one wire, but it, even then it could be prudent to use tape anyway because it will smooth out the connection points uh, between the pulling wire and your ethernet cable, and it'll just give some extra security so that it doesn't snap loose. Next step is to lube up the cable. 
We do this to make it slide through the conduit a bit easier. Uh, it's not absolutely necessary, but you'll notice, especially on longer lengths, that it has a very, well, positive effect. Uh, as you were able to see in the previous video, we use 3M lubricant. Uh, the reason we do this is because, well, it's officially meant for this purpose. And if you use anything else like uh, dish soap or green soap or any kinds of uh, household tricks, yeah, it might help you get this wire through. But if you ever want to replace the wire or put something else in the conduit or someone who lives there after you needs to do this. Uh, most of these tricks, uh, the, the stuff you use for these tricks, uh, actually becomes hard and even sometimes a, a form of glue. So the cable will be stuck in there forever and basically render that conduit useless. So please don't use any of that stuff. Get the right kind of lubricant and you'll be set. Once that is done, carefully start pulling the pulling wire back to the destination end and be careful when, well, basically uh, threading in the connection into the pipe. Once it's in there, you can start pulling it a bit faster. That also brings me to an important point of this video. Although it's called pulling wires, most of the time, uh, depending on a bit on a type of cable, you'll actually be working harder on pushing the wire than actually pulling it. For my CAT7 cable, this is definitely the case. Shorter lengths, like 2 to maybe 3-4 meters, uh, you'll manage with only pulling, but if it starts to become longer, like 5, 10, 15, or even 20 meters, as I have in my house, basically the cable that's dragging behind, or the, the, the part that you've already pulled in, becomes so heavy that the two pairs you used in the Ethernet cable well, they can't take that strain. So if you just keep pulling the wire without feeding it in there at the same time, well, in the end, it'll just snap off and you'll have to start all over. So the biggest lesson of this whole video is pulling wires is mostly about feeding wires into the conduit. <laughs> so the way we did it, is one person is at the destination end and they basically put a, a constant uh, pressure on the cable and the one that's feeding the wire into the conduit is actually the one that's in control and you'll probably be able to uh, to see in the video how we do that and uh, that when the wire is coming out it's really the motions that the person who's uh, threading the wire in is doing and any attempt we did at pulling harder on the destination end, trying to pull it through, always resented, uh, resulted in the cable snapping and, well, it just didn't work. So pull, uh, pushing the wire in is key. As I said, if you have more flexible cable like CAT7 or, or other type of cable, pulling might work better because it's also lighter. But just remember, it's a two-person job. And that's it. The cable's through. You have it at your destination end. And the only thing left to do is terminate it and uh, get it into the wall socket and fit nicely. But that will be a separate video. Ah, yes, that's secret tip. If you ever have to pull wire that's going to be longer than 10 or maybe 15 meters or conduits which have weird bends in it or stuff like that, you're going to have trouble getting the pulling wire through in the first place because uh, the longer length it becomes, the harder it will be to well, basically move everything you already have in there along. Especially if you have, if you have long planes where the cable is basically laying flat, flat that's all um, friction and you have to work against that. And if you then encounter certain bends, well, for one run in the garage, uh, I, I spent about 45 minutes just trying to get the pooling wire through. So that wasn't working very well. So what is this trick? Well, get your vacuum cleaner out. And a decent length of thin rope. And why a decent length? You're going to need the length of your conduit. And as we just said, it's probably going to be 15, 20 meters. 
plus maybe two or three meters on each end. So basically you get 30 meters or something like that. Ah, yes, and the last part you'll need is a piece of conduit that's either one size bigger than the conduit you're threading through or one size smaller. And a piece of tape. First step, get the piece of conduit and get the suction mouth of your vacuum cleaner and basically make an airtight seal so that they're attached to each other and now it's sucking through the conduit. Second step, get the piece of uh, string and make a little bowl of a, a few knots uh, or get a piece of, uh, I don't know, a plastic bag or something light but which has a bit of volume and attach it to one end of the cable. Once that's done, thread the thinner or thicker pipe uh, onto the conduit where you want the cable to end up and now it will be sucking through the conduit. Set your vacuum cleaner to the lowest setting because that's more than enough to pull this piece of string through. Now, at the central location, your, your other person should hear one of the conduits sucking. And I mostly tried this with my finger to see which one was sucking. You, you'll easily be able to tell. And then get the end of the rope and basically let it fly through the conduit. Keep hold of it though, because if you're not careful, it'll just suck in the whole wire and it'll, it'll disappear into the vacuum cleaner. So let go in parts of one meter or five meters or 10 meters or something like that. Once you think it's through, the, the one holding the vacuum cleaner should keep checking now and then to see if it's through. And once it's through, get the part that went in your vacuum cleaner out. And now you have a wire or a piece of string through the conduit. So get your pulling wire and attach the, uh, the, the, the end which has the loop point to the string and basically use the string to feed the pulling wire back through the conduit. Again, don't think you can use this tiny piece of weak string to pull the pulling wire through because as the length that it goes in increases, the weight that it has to pull also increases in friction and basically you'll you'll snap off your piece of string so it's again you have to work together feeding and pulling at the same time to get everything through and if you're stuck what we would do is go back and forth a few times and that made it so much easier to do those long lengths without we would struggle for hours and doing this we'd have the pulling wire through in five minutes so that is the secret tip <laughs> and well that's it that's how you pull ethernet cables or wires through a conduit i hope you like this video and uh, please like it and subscribe comments and questions are always welcome and i hope to see you back in future videos take care